surveys, and it was just amazing what they found out. Uh, I don't even want to quote to you the percentages. It's horrible. Uh, so I, I determined myself to use the, use the Bible more and to have you turn to the verses so you can see them. So you can actually see them and read. He realized that's just not something he's talking about. This is the Word of God. This is the Word of God that you're holding in your hand. It is the Word of God. Let's turn to Matthew chapter 6. And we're going to pick up one verse in the 6th chapter. And it's the 24th verse. It's the first book of the New Testament. The 6th chapter and the 24th verse of that chapter. And this is what it says. No one can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. I want to read it again because I want you to get it in your heart today. No one. Say no one. No one. That means you and me. Can serve, can, no one can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other. Now that's God speaking. Ah, oh, Lord, I can, I can, you know, I can manipulate this a bit, a little bit, and fake on it. No, you can't. No, he said, either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will loyal, be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. I don't believe anyone faced this more than Jesus. I, I believe he revealed something that was unbelievable and really people have a problem handling this even today. There are two worlds and two kingdoms. The lesson today is the war of two worlds. That's what the title of our lesson is today. The war of two worlds. The clash of two kingdoms. One is the kingdom of heaven. Now that kingdom of heaven is not only in heaven, it's also down here right now in our hearts. Jesus has said, the kingdom of heaven has come unto you. In another place he says, the kingdom of heaven is within you. So we have one kingdom of heaven. The second kingdom is the kingdom of darkness. Now, I want you to see this in the word. I want you to see it. Because these two worlds, these two kingdoms are violently opposed to each other. And we are in the middle. There's a battle going on, and we're in the middle of this battle. And we make by our choices, do we want to be in this kingdom, or do we want to be in this kingdom? And God has told us very clearly here, you can't be in both. In fact, back in 1 John, he says, you need to hate this world, and anything to do with this world. And boy, that's a heavy one. Because a lot of things in this world we like. We really are attracted to this world. Come on. There's nobody here with a, you know, a halo around your head. We're all, we all have problems in that, in that area. But what I want you to see today, there are two kingdoms. The first kingdom is Satan's kingdom. Turn with me in the same book. I want you to see this now. In Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12 and verses 25 and 26. Now listen to what it says. But Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. And every city or house divided against itself will not stand. Now listen to this. If Satan casts out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then will his kingdom stand? This is Jesus speaking. He's talking about the kingdom of Satan. How will then will his kingdom stand? The second kingdom is God's kingdom. And same book, go back to Matthew chapter 4 and verse 17. Let me read it to you if you can't find it. Chapter 4, verse 17. From that time Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom is at, of heaven is at hand. I could go and give you a lot of verses on either one of those. But I want you to understand today, there are two worlds. There are two kingdoms. And they're clashing. They're opposed to each other. And you're either, you're either in this kingdom or in that kingdom. Very clearly, he says you can't be in both kingdoms. Either you're going to love the one and hate the other, or love the one and hate the other. So it's a choice we make. Our text says that we have to make a stand. Either we are in one kingdom or the other. We can't operate in two kingdoms. And of course, I believe this is where many of the clashes come. We are in this clash of two worlds... True kingdom, this is why there is a battle. 
This is why this is why we're in a battle because there's two kingdoms there. We're constantly fighting them, and they're fighting. I, I know you want. <laughs> I I know you want to hear how much Jesus loves you. Okay, I I know you like to hear that. And I, I, I believe he wants you to know he loves you. And he wants you to have the best. Which he does. But, it's the, but he also said in his word, in Matthew chapter 11, he said, The violent shall take his kingdom by force. The violent shall take his kingdom by force. In other words, you're going to have to fight the kingdom of darkness against the kingdom of light. And if you want to go out of the kingdom of darkness, which is where you're born, and you want to get into the kingdom of light, you're going to have to fight. There's a lot of fighting that takes on. The Bible's very clearly about this. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but of principalities, powers, and rulers of darkness, and spiritual wickedness in high places. And Jesus meets Jesus meets this battle head on when he faces the religious crowd. He meets it head on. I, I, I use this verse in Matthew. Uh, please follow with me. Matthew 23. I want you to see these first foundation verses. Matthew 23. Now listen to what he says. It's in Matthew 23. And the first one is verse 13. This is what Jesus thinks about religious people. He says, but what are you? Scribes and Pharisees. Hypocrites. This is, how, this is what he thinks about religious people. Because the Pharisees were very religious and so were the scribes. So when somebody tells me that you're religious, that irritates me. Because I am not religious. I want to be Christ-like and so do you. We, we, don't want to have a, we don't have a set of rules. But woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, for you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For you neither go in yourselves nor do you allow those who are entering to go in. Now listen to what he says. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you devour widows' houses and for pretense make long prayers. Therefore you will receive greater condemnation. Goes on in the 15th verse. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you travel land and sea to win one proselyte, and when he is one, you make him twice as much a son of hell as yourselves. Now those are strong words. Drop down, same chapter, the 23rd verse. Just a couple of verses here. Listen to what it says. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. Now he's strong. He's strong to these people. He says, for you pay tithe in men and amos in common and have neglected the weightier matters of the law, justice and mercy and faith. These you ought to have done without leaving the others undone. Blind guides who strain out a gnat and swallow a camel. And here's how he ends it. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you cleanse the outside of the cup and dish, but inside they are full of extortion and self-indulgence. Now who's he talking to? He's talking to the religious crowd. He's talking to people who put on this great pretense. The Pharisee was a religious sect. And this explains, obviously, this explains their hostility and their influence over the people led to their demand for the crucifixion of Jesus. It was them who yelled, crucify him, crucify him. It was the Pharisees and the scribes. Jesus confronts this attitude with this scathing condemnation of their attitude and self-righteousness. And I believe there's a message today that we need to get a hold of. Because what they thought, what they thought was so holy before God, was the stench in his nostrils. Hypocrites. And man has this idea that his works will take him into heaven. I hear people say this all the time. The sad part, listen to me now, the sad part they are dead wrong. They're dead wrong. And, and they think they're right. And the only thing that will convince them they're wrong is the life you live in front of them and the word of God that you apply to your life. Think, I want you to think about those word, that word dead wrong because as I was looking at that this week, see, when you're dead and wrong, there is no such thing as a second chance. When you're dead, you better be right. If you don't believe what I'm saying today, then in you that are listening by video today, you need to read the Word of God and find out what God's Word says. And don't be 